Hey guys, today I thought I'd take you along with me on my journey of learning to use watercolours. My name is Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow even if you're just starting out. I've always wanted to try watercolour but I've already got tons of art supplies in a bunch of different mediums so I didn't really want to add to that by buying watercolours as well. But when I went to my local art store not too long ago they had these pans on sale, they were really quite cheap so I gave in and bought a few. I've never used watercolour before, well actually I lie, I used watercolours in high school but they were like those cheap ones that come in plastic stackable pan things and I have used watercolour pencils quite a bit which I love so I thought I'd give these a try as well. I did a couple of swatches to see what the colours would look like because they always look different on the paper than they do in the pan and I just had a bit of a play around with some different techniques as well. These are the Van Gogh watercolour pans and I know they're student grade but they're made by the company Royal Talons and they also make Rembrandt, Strathmore and Secura, Secura art supplies, I'm probably saying that wrong, um, amongst other brands as well. And the colours that I picked are light fast according to the ASTM standards. So I know they aren't professional paints but I wasn't sure if I was going to like watercolour so I thought I'd give these a shot before I invest in professional grade watercolours. And if I do sell any artwork I created with them I know that they won't fade anytime soon. So as usual I went straight into a full size piece without doing any trial pieces first which I wouldn't recommend doing. If you're just starting out I would suggest doing a smaller subject or a study of a section of your subject before going on to a larger scale piece. So I thought I would try the wet in wet technique, so I wet the entire page with my paintbrush and added some paint, but I put too much water down and I didn't realise how much the paint would actually spread. I also think it would be better if I did sections at a time, like do the bird first or the beak first and then wait for that to dry and then do the background, so I started again. I have my piece taped down with some scotch tape just so that when I add the water it will dry flat again. And I wet the toucan first this time and then started adding some colour. This piece wasn't intended to be a masterpiece, so I'm having fun just trialling some things as I go. Um, ignore my little crappy excuse for a watercolour tin in the corner there. I stuck the pans down with blue tack so they wouldn't move. This is just a temporary solution while I wait for a proper watercolour tin that I ordered online. So I used some blues and purples instead of going straight in with black so it stops the black looking flat. And here you can see I kept adding more and more colour while it was still wet. Next time I think it would be better to do a light wash and then wait for it to dry and then keep adding more layers to it. I think I went a bit too dark too early so it was hard to control what the colours would look like when they dried. So I added some splatter techniques with the blues and purples by having quite a lot of paint and water on the paintbrush and then just tapping the brush over the artwork so little drips splatter everywhere. And then I added some water to some of those splatters to make them a bit lighter and spread out a bit more and make some interesting shapes. And I wanted to create some drips coming down from the toucan but because I stuck the paper to the table I couldn't lift the piece to let the drips fall naturally so I just painted them in instead. While I wait for the dark section of the body to dry I moved on to the beak and I chose the beak because it doesn't actually touch any part that I've already painted so the colours won't bleed into each other creating mud. So I started with yellows and then added some darker oranges into it and you can see me using tissue in some areas to fix up the bits of paint that I didn't want there. And I go in with more splatter effects in various yellows, reds and oranges to create some more of those drips as well. So going back to the toucan, I'm using some tissue just to lift up some of the wet paint along his back to create a little bit of a highlight. So here I'm drying it with the hairdryer and you can see some of the really wet blobs spread across the page like on the top left there where my hand is. I actually didn't mind that effect so I might use that technique in the future to my advantage. So moving on to the branch, instead of just going in with brown I'm using a lot of blues and purples as well mixed in so that the colour doesn't look flat and it keeps it, look, keeps it looking more vibrant. Going back to the beak area, now that the yellows and oranges are dry, I'm adding some of those details at the top where the nose is and on the tip. I'm using tissue to remove some of the wet paint and create some highlights again. So the beak area is actually dry and I'm just going in with these darker reds and oranges to create some of that texture that toucans have on their beaks. On the white part of his body, the shadow part is really quite dark and it isn't white at all. So I've wet the entire section with the paintbrush and I'm adding some greens and yellows and browns to create the shadow on the underside of his body there. 
and I'm just going back and over the top of that with some darker greens and yellows in there as well. So I'm starting on the background now and I want it to be a bright and expressive piece, not too wishy-washy, um, lots of bright, vibrant colors, but also have it look like a watercolor piece, not an acrylic painting. So I started by adding some green to the corners of the dry paper and then dabbed some darker greens in there as well. So it would, would bleed and blend out a little bit. And I continued this process moving inwards towards the toucan and adding lots of different greens and yellows and ochres. I went through and added some water to some areas to create some interesting cauliflower effects and to lighten up some areas. And so I've added some more splatters using darker greens and yellows in there as well. I didn't like how white the area was that's around the toucan directly. So I went in with some lighter greens and yellows and started to lay some color down right up to the edge of the toucan. And then I continued doing this so that it blended in with the background a little bit. So the background is now completely dry and I've just gone in to that blue circle that's around the eye with a little tiny brush to create some of that detail. And while that was drying, I decided to go back to the background and add in some more blues and purples just to make the toucan blend in a bit. And I added quite dark colors around the corners and the edges so that the so that when you're looking at the painting, your eye is drawn in towards the toucan rather than off the page. And I just continue to add more and more color until I'm happy with the way that it looks. While I waited for the background to dry, I started adding some color to his feet. I didn't want there to be too much detail because the rest of the painting was quite loose. So I just added some blues and grays and I'll come back later to add some more shadows. I'm going back to the eye and adding some more details there. And I'm fixing up some of the darker areas and the details around the beak to increase that contrast as well. So I'm just using some more reds and some oranges and yellows on top of the previous layer just to make those colors pop a little, more, a little bit more. And then I moved back onto the body of the toucan. So here I'm adding some more of those greeny, gray, yellowy colors to the white bit. And then I'm moving on to the black part of the toucan as well. So I'm just mixed in some purple and some blues with the black again. And I'm adding that to the um, shadow parts of the body. And going back to the branch and the feet area, I'm just adding in a couple of little details with some darker paint there. Um, again, not too much detail because it would detract from the actual bird itself. And I'm going through and adding some more of those drips from the branch and from the toucan's beak and body as well. And now that the eye and the areas around the eye are completely dry, I'm going in with the orange in that section there. And then I'm just darkening up some of the shadows with a bit of a red color. Now I'm going back in with another layer on the toucan's body just to darken it up even more. So I wanted to make the background even more vibrant. So I added some really bright yellows and some bright greens as well. So when I started to add more colors to the background, the painting was completely dry to start with. And then as I added some more yellows and greens on top, they started to bleed into each other and create a nice soft look. Then I added some really bright splatters of reds and oranges and purples. And then I just used some tissue to blot out any of the areas that I wanted to be a little bit lighter or a little bit less um, harsh. And here I'm just using some gouache for the highlights. This is just an opaque kind of watercolor. It behaves pretty much the same as the watercolor. Um, and the more water you add, the more transparent it is. So if you want a really opaque highlight, try not to add too much water to it. So I waited for the painting to dry and then I went in with some yellow and green and um, white splatters and I'm using the gouache for the white splatters so it comes up really opaque. And the reason that I waited for the painting to dry was so that the splatters wouldn't bleed out at all. And I'm using that opaque white gouache to bring out some of the highlights in the branch and the beak and the back of the bird. So here I wanted to try something different and I added some more white gouache to the background and then I'm using water straight from my water jar to add to those little splatters. And I tried to use the straw to sort of like blow them out to make a kind of a different effect, but it didn't really work as well as I wanted to. Um, so I went back in with the tissue and I dabbed up some of the excess paint and I really liked how that turned out. Actually, it's kind of a more cloudy effect, but I think I'll use that te technique in the future. I removed the tape from the outside of my painting and then I'm fixing up the little edges where the paint's gone too far into the white bit with a damp cotton tip here. It's really useful, it just lifts the dry paint straight up. When I took the tape off, I realized how much the paper had actually warped and it has this sort of rippled effect. 
and I wanted to fix it so I came across this method which I thought I'd share with you because it worked really well and it could be really useful if your paintings are also warped. So first I just put a clean sheet of paper down so that my painting wouldn't be damaged by anything that might have been on the table. And then I laid my painting face down onto that clean sheet of paper. And then I got a damp sponge and I moistened the entire back of the painting making sure that it was really evenly coated but not with too much water. And then I just laid a bit of tracing paper on top of that just as kind of like an isolation area between the wet painting and anything that I laid on top of it. And then I started by putting a flat board down and then started to add some heavier items on top. So this is just a box that I had with some storage items in it. Luckily I have a Harry Potter obsession which leads me to collect an unnecessary amount of heavy and hardbacked Harry Potter book sets. So basically you just want to put as much weight as you can on top of the board to keep the painting flat and not moving at all. And then just leave it overnight so that the watercolour painting will completely dry. If any of you guys work in watercolours and you have any tips to stop the paper from warping in the first place, I'd love to know. I think I might have just added too much water to my painting, but I'm sure someone out there will be able to tell me what I'm doing wrong to avoid it for next time. And as you can see, the painting is pretty much flat and there's no warping or ripples or anything like that anymore. There are a few things that I would do differently next time, but I really liked the end result and I really enjoyed the process. And I may have to put watercolours on my birthday wish list. If you'd like to check out some other tutorials, there are some videos on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.